Fasten your seatbelts, fellow flames. This new moon energy in Pisces is about to launch you to the next level in all areas of your life. Stay tuned because I'm going to share with you five areas of focus that will help you utilize that energy. Hello, fellow flames. My name is Dr. Harmony. In case we haven't met, welcome to my weekly glow show. In this channel, I will help you to unlock your hidden power and potential so you can align with your highest and greatest destiny in life, love, and livelihood. Today, I want to talk to you about the new moon energy for Pisces here on February to 23rd of 2020. And I want to share with you five areas of focus that if you place your attention on during this timeline, it will amplify the work you're doing to align with this portal of energy to help enhance your ability to integrate the energy to utilize it in your life and everything around you through the magic of the moon that gives us an opportunity to amplify our work always. So Pisces, let's talk about that for a minute before I share the five areas of focus. Pisces is very fluid. It's flow. It's flexible. And it's all about following your feelings, which is really following your heart. We in this journey as a twin flame, that's what the journey is all about, is flow. It's about yin and yang. It's about balance. So really, you know, we could call all of that in one lump sum coming into this balance of ourselves. And at the timeline of this, as always, it could not be more perfect because this is the end of the end of the end. This is the end of the zodiac calendar. So when we go into March into the Aries energy, we will actually go into the, the new energy of the new earth, the new world, the new identities, and a new zodiac alignment. And that kind of wraps them all up. So what I'm seeing in this particular energy, that this portal of energy for this new moon, which has been ramping up since the full moon in Leo on the 8th, 9th, at the beginning of February, this was like also taking us through this, like if you think about going hunting with a bow and arrow and, you know, from February 8th, 9th, we're pulling back that arrow. So we've been pulling that back. We've been creating the momentum. We've been going deep within. We've been revisiting things. We've been rewriting, rewinding, redoing, and creating this impactful energy that is to be released during this time frame to accelerate what we're doing further faster and mercury retrograde coming into this that this alignment is also part of this this going deeper to help correct the mistakes to help redo misunderstandings to recreate and rewrite miscommunication with yourself with everyone so in this pisces energy pisces can also be very indecisive they are creative, they are imaginative, which is why it's perfect for this new beginning. But so it's like the new beginnings here and the old stuff is still with us in order to revisit it so that we can redo it in a new way this time. So what this is doing really is putting us at a crossroads of a direction of how we go forward in the new beginning with this little bit of this kind of old identity, all the new identity coming into place and, and the identity being from that harmony inside out, our frequency, our vibration, our truth of what it is we've been working on unlocking. And we're, a, a lot of us could be sitting at this crossroads of this, this direction and looking at it from a place of how do I navigate this now? And being really discerning, am I going to repeat patterns and not wanting to? And so it can kind of, in some ways, this momentum has gave you the opportunity to visit this space. But this energy, the arrow's releasing. The energy is going direct. 
by the time this Mercury goes direct, it is it, this is like this quantum leap. We've we've all in motivational personal development heard of quantum leaps. This is the mother of all quantum leaps that's happening. This is what we've been working on all of this time. So let's jump into those five things that you can focus on. The first thing is rapid awakenings are taking place on every level. To give you an example of that, I can't tell you how many newbies that's awakened to this journey just recently in the last, um, since December, that has really been going through this impactful shift of the twin flame journey and they're catching up speed since December. This is February. And in addition to that, if we've been on this journey, we're experiencing acute awareness, precision, like being able to see below lines, to see below that line, to the next line, to the next line. Divine masculines that I'm seeing in around my practice of coaching and helping clients in my personal life and other clients that are around divine masculine, they are rapidly awakening through this acute precision of awareness of what's going on. The feedback I'm getting from that, even directly from the divine masculine, is how overwhelmed that they are feeling and how at this, the same token, this is all for growth, all of it. And one of the things that's really coming up with that with the divine masculine or anyone for that matter, some people are trying to create a false illusion to this awareness. And they're trying to redirect that energy away from what it is that you're being acutely asked to see. And it can't happen in this vibration. And so the resistance to that is creating a lot of internal battle and internal struggle if you're still there because that is all designed to reveal the hidden truths that you've not been willing to see. So that all this light that's coming in is illuminating your shadows and everything and everyone around you so that you can get this awakening, that you can see the truth and that you can then own it and step into it at your highest version of you. The second thing to focus on during this new moon energy is that you are separating from your old identity in every area of your life, your life and your, the love and the relationships that are just falling away, new ones gravitating to you potentially, um, and it's your frequency really that has risen and is rised up to its higher truth and its higher potential. And in that, that calls for a, a rematching of the harmony I talk about from the inside out of everything around you now navigating and gravitating to you from the higher frequency. And in this, this frequency, it's taken like all of what we've done through this long period of time for some of us, quick for others. But the whole point of that is, is to create this new identity of who we are so that we can implement what it is we came here to do. And most people are trying to figure out how to recreate or reinvent themselves because they've been stripped of everything that they've known and implementing the new ways or the new habits or you know whatever that is it's it's creating this crossing of a portal that is the true rebirth that we've been hearing for so long or talking about for so long or have went through layers of that or multiple identities through this process if you've been doing it very long it's like you're doing it again and again and again but the point of it again is to get to the highest version of you, always going to the quantum leap of the next level. So we're quantum, this energy is taking the quantum leap to shift us in, into the next dimension, into the next level, into the next highest version of ourselves. So as we separate from that identity, that means we're separating from things around us down to letting go of a piece of yourself that maybe you have liked, letting go of your twin flame. And if you have not let go of that concept of letting go of your twin flame at this point, you know, you're going to really be put to the test in this energy because it won't match the frequency of not just you, but the collective now. So this has been from Harmony Inside Out of the collective energy has changed. 
So the collective energy is supporting and feeding back now and forcing the shifts into the collective energy with everything and everyone around us so that the patterns can't like remain in that energy. And, you know, I made a post this last week about, you know, letting go of your twin flame is really letting go of your deepest, darkest shadows so that you can find a greater, better version of yourself. So when you go through this identity change and you're being presented with all of this energy in and around your twin flame and it all is pointing to the pain within you or the the heart like that we just went through, we, we keep going through these heart portals, but we just went through a huge heart portal with the Leo energy of the full moon releasing what's blocking you from aligning with your heart basically so that you can bring all these things into motion of this new identity. And that's creating heart expansion from the pain to the pleasure to help you experience a greater, higher love that you would have never experienced in this. So it takes separating from all the things that doesn't serve your purpose anymore, that you don't love anymore. People, um, the, your job, your, you know, the identity and the status of who you created that no longer exist. And so, you know, that is forcing you to take a look at that through that acute awareness now of what still exists that you need to put some action into or focus on. So the third thing to focus on is we are taking the ultimate test of truth right now. The way I feel this within me is that it's like I've been, you know, to preschool and I've been to grade school, middle school, high school. I went in to, you know, college and then I went to grad school. And then from there to practice as a chiropractor, I had to take the ultimate test of the state boards and not even the state boards because they did away with them the year I did it. I had to take the national boards, which gave me a license for every state but like two or I don't remember the number, but like a couple. So it was like taking one test for every state, you know, to practice in. And then basically this is what we've been doing and we're taking this ultimate test now. So that means that every area of your life is being affected and being forced to look at with that acute awareness. And that is also potentially being separation from a lot of parts within that because at this stage of the game, it's about revisiting like the old patterns so you can implement the new patterns or the habits, but it's happening now, lightning speed, like so much lightning speed that it is like, we cannot, because of that collective energy I mentioned, we can't really get out of alignment anymore. We're being forced into the highest good. And that's creating this cataclysmic like collision of you and your highest good and highest truth that smacking can smack you upside of the head and also create what the what like feelings like because one minute you're being you're like a pinball machine and you're that pinball and you're bouncing and things are pinging you all over like i can feel that even in me like in this energy right now because everything's moving so quickly so quickly to the point it makes it feel like my head is spinning in fact it was this morning when i woke up and for those of you've heard me talk i've suffered from some vertigo since back in the summer that's had me on a path of inner like healing on a very deep physical level to focus on me. And, you know, I'm feeling this sense of like dizziness and out of control and like imbalance, but I'm staying as balanced as you can get. It's what I see in this portal of energy. It's like we're being funneled through this vacuum of what doesn't like, service is being just like coming along and sucking it out like super quick and like then what is for a higher good is dropping out of the sky and gravitating is just as fast and it's spinning from one direction and then before you can catch your balance you're being catapulted into the next direction to to, to take off into that space and like you haven't even caught up to what just happened and so the goal is, is we're getting in alignment with our highest self and our highest truth with this. And so we're taking the ultimate test to find this highest truth of what it is we truly love and what we desire and what we want to bring into our wisdom and bring into form in the highest, most pristine version of the best self that we could become in that authenticity 
of real and raw and open and to receive and to bring balance into ourselves as we move forward in our new identities. So number four is next level living. This, I kind of already segued into this because this next level is the quantum leap that I'm referring to. It is the shift that I just mentioned. It is lightning speed. It is shifting so fast. I said this, it'd make your head spin. And it is forcing you to choose things of the highest order of the next level and the next version of who you are so that you can experience the alignment of your heart and the whole complete. And you know, I'm even hearing divine masculines talk about wanting to be whole and complete and they're choosing themselves before they're choosing partners because they know that if they go forward, they want that to be from a different way than it's been in the past. And the divine feminine has not really given them the space or the freedom as a collective to allow them to do that. It's changing. That is changing. So, you know, if you're the divine feminine out there, you need to continue to work on yourself for your own empowerment, continue to give that other person the freedom and the space to become who they need and to know that they're choosing themselves. And why would you want someone that wouldn't choose themselves first anyway? Because that's what this journey is all about. And if you want someone, I don't care if you're divine masculine here or divine feminine, if you want them to come into alignment with the highest version of you or your potential or what your desires are, then they need to be there for themselves as well. And, you know, I want to give kudos to a couple, like I know that are really doing that. One particular is like, um, like in this journey with me. So like helping me see this within myself. And so, you know, if you watch this, you're going to know who you are. And I just want to thank you because one, you know, I've gave you the space to do the same thing within your journey. And two, you give that back. And that's a very beautiful thing. And even in that, just to kind of throw this out there, we went through a whole role reversal from, you know, masculine and feminine to shifting the roles within it to me being the one that kind of wanted to be the runner to say, I can't take this anymore. And him holding space for me with that. And then recreating that in a new and beautiful way that the key in this, as far as our next level, I've said this before, is who and what are you taking with you? So in these, the scenario I just painted, I wasn't sure if he was going with me to the next level or not, because, and it wasn't, here's the thing, it was not a thing he was doing. It was my own reflection of what I wasn't willing or wanting to see within myself to be able to decide if that was the highest good or not. And not sure if he was going to match that highest good. But the more I stayed in the highest good, the more he matched the highest good. And the more that we've came out of this in full harmony and being able to fully respect each other in such a beautiful way of the highest version of love I feel like you could have. So like, I don't even, this wasn't even planned, but thank you. You've helped me go to the next level of living and I know you have too. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. So thank you. Giving And maybe that's another part of this is giving gratitude. Maybe that's why that came through, being able to give the gratitude back to the situation, to find it from a place that, yeah, my head might be spinning and this is all moving so quickly. But like, as long as we can do what this Pisces energy is doing and staying fluid, flow, flexible, then we're able to do these role reversals that I'm just discussing with you or sharing with you on my own personal journey here to like allow ourselves to have what it is we want. And then, you know, in that whole scenario, even painted, it, it opened up to me being at the next level of the receiving of what it is I want now. And, you know, things are coming through with that too. And also that will also, you know, make your head spin when that happens. And, and things are, again, just constantly shifting. So we got to shift with it and allow ourselves to be that ping pong and be kind of a little bit bounced around, but we got to know when to go with it and allow ourselves to go through that process. So, you know, again, people might just be falling away, but know that if it's happening, it's not for your highest good. Maybe you need to, through that old identity, let go of your twin flame in this next level. Maybe in the highest good, it's allowing some opening the space for somebody to gravitate in that will take you to the next level. 
but you can't allow that or have that unless you allow that. So the fifth thing to focus on and or to really be aware of is you at this crossroads that I mentioned that this is kind of taking us to in this ultimate test as well. It's putting us in a place of a lot of decisions to make. And in those decisions that we need to make, we will be, we, there is no right or wrong decision. I always say that. Let me start with that because it doesn't matter if you make the right or wrong decision, you're going to make the decision your soul needs for the experience it needs to get what it needs out of this journey to keep you going to the next and next level. So the key in this, if you can have the awareness, that's why we're getting acute awareness out of this that I said in the number one, because we are in this higher plane, we're not making as many redirects. We're not making as many reroutes. We can see really quickly in that acute awareness when we make these decisions or need to make a decision, what is the old pattern? What is the new test? Or what is like that you're not going to be repeating? And so, you know, in choosing this, when you make these choices, remember that really at the end of the day, it's about choosing what is your highest good at that next level of living in life, love, and livelihood, and not being willing to settle for less than what you desire. And that's why it's been so important to get in tune with your heart, to come into alignment with your heart, to really know crystalline, precisionly clear what it is you desire from your heart now, not your head. And in this decision though, it does require to take action. Because if you're not taking action, then you're going to either be, choose, you know, in this decision, choose to shift or you're going to be forced to shift. So shift or be shifted. I talk about this in my book, Twin Flame Code Breaker, all the time, which by the way, the Spanish version did go publish 222 of 2020 yesterday. I had several glitches, but it all got worked out. Um, it all published and I have a launch date that I'll officially announce, but that um, looking at 229, launching it for an international bestseller of the twin, the Spanish version of Twin Flame Code Breaker. And if you do not watch my video on coming into alignment with yourself, those 11 principles, this would be also a good time to do that. I'll make sure I have a link to that, as well as my own story about how some things came into alignment with me. Um, as a demonstration of what can show up in your life when you're in alignment. Because when you do get into this alignment of your heart, you show up and everything will show up for you and what you need. But something came through to me this week to share with you. So I want to challenge you this for yourself because I've also had to make some really, faced with some really deep decisions based on what is my highest good in just, you know, the last couple weeks. And... Um, so I know a lot of you out there doing the same thing. Everybody I'm working with is doing the same thing. And these decisions are coming through with less, dis like less chaos. They're coming through more clear. They're easier to see, but they're also because they're the deepest because that energy and that momentum of being pulling back and going really, really deep because they're the deepest. They're the ones we still haven't seen or still hasn't come to light yet. And they can, be, you know, in this energy, the fastest to clear, but the deepest thing that we've experienced thus far, which is how this whole journey keeps evolving to the next and next level. But the, the, the thing was, I was de, like guided through my own experience of this is to look at and then share with you, like, so I want to do this as a challenge for you for this new moon. And I want you to put a comment below your answer to what I'm about to ask you. This would be awesome. There'll be two parts I'm going to tell you. So basically, like, what am I willing not to blank, fill in the blank? What, is, like, let's just say maybe your twin flame. What, what am I willing, why am I not willing to let go my twin flame? And now keep in mind, these questions, when we ask for this revealing information, could be an unconscious awareness that comes up, or it could be conscious. Maybe we're willing to make a change, but we can't see it yet. But maybe unconsciously, we're not even willing to make a change. So, you know, using the thought that this could be conscious or unconscious things that are going on, but to ask yourself, your guidance, your higher self, your higher wisdom, and say, what am I not willing to see about blank, the situation? And it's not just about C. You could, there's multiple things within the C. So what am I not willing to see, say, step into, 
or not open up to receiving love about the situation. So it, you may not be able to see it, but there may be something you're not speaking your truth about. You may need to take the action and step into something that you don't know why you aren't doing. You might see what it is, but you're not speaking about it. And you might see what it is and not speaking about it and know you're not speaking about it, but now you're not stepping into what you need to do to take the action for the forward motion. Maybe you've been in a karmic situation or in a, a connection with someone that's bringing in your signs of all the things you need to see within yourself, but that contract's over and because you're really connected to them and you like them, maybe you need to step out of that situation. Like I was talking about earlier, feeling like I needed to do and that by stepping out really the, determines if they step with you or not. And they will either step with you or away from you. But you have to know that you have to follow your own alignment, your own truth. And then maybe in all of this, you're not allowing, you're not being open to receive what it is because of the walls of protection. Therefore, you're not able to receive the love you desire in the situation. So I want to, the question for you is like, what are you either not seeing, saying, stepping into, not receiving, or willing to like experience love about the situation? And, and when you have this decision and you're asking yourself about this decision, what you're not either seeing, saying, stepping into, not open to, or being willing to receive or experience love about it make a comment below, all right? I'm about to head to a family function and I send you guys so much grace, love, gratitude from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for this journey. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for showing up. Make sure to like, comment, share the shine. May you always face your fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. Namaste.